Okay. Okay. We'll start with the owl thing. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the National Great Stories Online News at Hi, I'm Robin Steinberg and welcome to my show again. Today we have uh, Mr. Leon Tang from OWL uh, here in Singapore and he's in charge of marketing here in, uh, in the Southeast Asia and the Asian region on processed coffee as well as the markets uh, is uh, arising. Uh, Leon, uh, thank you for joining, joining me here at this uh, National Critics' Choice. Now tell us more about what's happening uh, about the trends uh, you know, of, of how consumers behave uh, towards Eastern uh, coffee. And, or, or processed coffee, they call it. And what's the difference between the Asian and the Western markets? Uh, currently, processed coffee is on the rise for the Asian markets per se, uh, mainly because people are more acceptive of this kind of coffee, and also because they, this kind of coffee is, is convenient. It's instant coffee; you can get it anywhere. Uh, with the most of the third world countries in Asia getting more and more affluent. This, this kind of choice, this lifestyle choice of actually drinking coffee becomes more readily available to them and they are actually picking up from this kind of coffee instead of the uh, rose and ground coffee first because this is easily available and it's cheaper, cheaper alternative. Therefore, we can see that for the Asian region, uh, processed coffee is actually rising much more. Uh, for the European markets, it's not that much because European markets, they have this uh, culture of drinking at the cafe uh, with this red, readily brewed kind of coffee so it's easier for them or they do not have that incentive to switch over to processed coffee at the moment uh, this coffee this brewed coffee is readily available and it, they do not view um, the instant coffee as a substitute in fact they view it as an inferior product so for the European markets actually processed coffee has not really been a, a, a market driver for, for this kind of uh, markets. Instead, they, they are, we are in the phase of trying to enter the Western markets instead. You know, we, we, can't, we, we, we do not have a very strong presence there. Instead, we have a very strong presence in the Asian economies whereby there are a large number of people. They are trying to get this um, coffee, um, lifestyle, lifestyle choice of coffee, and they are, they are going through using this uh, processed kind of coffee. Now, how did that perception uh, begin with uh, Asians that love uh, instant coffee rather than just uh, having a pure uh, root coffee? Uh, mainly why this happens is because the Asians, we, we were, how do you put it? We are actually a very hardworking bunch of people. We, our lifestyle is very hectic and, and, and we, we sometimes we work throughout the night, we are workaholics and stuff like that. So we actually want to keep ourselves um, awake most of the time and we started drinking coffee, you know, brewed coffee, those, those brewed by the beans. But we realized that it took a lot of time. Uh, we have to brew the beans and then after that you have to add your own milk, add the sugar, you stir it and then you wait for it for a while and then you, you drink it. Uh, we realized that this actually takes a lot of time. So uh, some companies came up with the idea of actually blending all this, uh, the, the coffee, the cream or the sugar together in a very convenient kind of sachet form and then you just dump all this in the cup, put hot water and, and you go. It's something like instant noodles. You don't cook the noodles, you just boil it in water and then and then it's done. So we started picking out this very fast, you know. Um, it's fast, it's, it's readily available, we can drink it anywhere. Therefore, the rise of the instant coffee came from Asia. And so much so, Nescafe had, uh, that, that uh, dominates this kind of, they used to have this um, coffee, uh, just pure coffee powder, you know, you can buy it at the supermarkets, you, you pour it into the, the cup and then you add your own milk and sugar. But after the rise of instant coffee, which, were, which was not their invention, they had to follow instant coffee and even come up with the, their instant coffee range, just for Asia. And now, speaking about instant coffee range in Asia, uh, what is our philosophy uh, about coffee? Uh, our, actually, we... We are looking. We are looking ourselves as a craftsman. We are meticulous in our kind of coffee. We we have been in the business for 56 years already, and counting. And therefore, we have always been trying to uh, present to the people a very time-honored recipe. You know, we have been doing it so many times, so well 
that we are that is going to be consistent throughout whatever we, we whatever coffee we, we, we produce is going to be very consistent and therefore that's our kind of philosophy we recently changed the uh, packaging of our uh, to be more modern but uh, this as well as your logo as well yeah the logo the logo <laughs> the, the packaging the owl, the owl is almost gone <laughs> yes so now now it's a very stylized kind of uh, owl with the body of the coffee bean you know? the coffee the coffee bean is like the owl's body so it becomes a very uh, we, but even though the brand and the packaging has been modernized however the the philosophy of being a time honored uh, Using time on recipes to craft our kind of uh, coffee has always been, mm-hmm. and that's our philosophy. Now, what's next uh, for Owl? I mean, uh, where are we uh, moving to right now for the next five years? Uh, what kind of plans does uh, Owl has in mind to have their coffee appeal to the new generation? Firstly, we change the packaging, uh, as I, ma- I mentioned before. Uh, it's more trendy. It's for the younger younger generation. Uh, we, we want to attract these younger people to say, hey, you know, this is, this is a trendy drink. It's not like uh, your, your, your father or mother's time kind of drink. Uh, other than that, we, have, we are coming out with more newer product, product ranges, newer flavors. For example, uh, we just came out with the Gula Malaka uh, flavor, coffee with Gula Malaka. Subsequently, we will be doing uh, other kind of flavoring of coffee that is more unique and more try to be more adventurous in a way to attract the younger generation. Also we are trying to expand um, into the into other markets using other our various other brands which have totally different kind of uh, philosophies. This is the entire our company's kind of uh, objective to not only uh, use one particular brand to, to enter the market but it also using several other brands to and the different different segments of the, uh, the market. So we're probably going to see our brand uh, over in the United States in the near future, I suppose. Uh, actually, our brand is already in the United States, but it's not very. Uh, it's it's not very. How does how do you put it? It's not all over the place. There's only a few places that you can see our currently, mainly in the more uh, Asian kind of shops. I see. Yes, more Asian kind of shops, such as Chinatown. Yes, most most likely in Chinatown. However, the the American people are quite receptive to processed coffee. Um, they are they are they are also their their lifestyle is also very hectic. So this kind of coffee actually complements their lifestyle as well. But uh, its pickup rate is not as rapid as those in in the Asian countries. Now, what lessons has our learned for the last uh, you know, 10 years and today? Uh, are they able to adapt to the changes? And do you think um, the prices of coffee itself will continue to uh, you know, uh, inflate? Firstly, our, I believe that the, we are constantly innovating. We are constantly trying to uh, keep up with the market. Uh, they are the demands and uh, what they, what the people will actually want to see in their coffee. So um, we we have realized that our old packaging has been uh, deemed very traditional, very very old fashioned. That we have to change the new packaging. We have also realized that people's consumers' taste have changed. We are trying to bring bring in uh, different kind of flavors for different kind, groups of consumers for them to actually uh, be able to say hey this is a fresh coffee you know it's not like I'm, I'm drinking this, this taste for, for 20 years and, and nothing has changed we are also trying to bring in new flavors for, for people to actually uh, savor however for the prices of coffee wise coffee has always been a, it's a commodity everybody drinks more, more and more people are drinking coffee actually coffee is if I'm not wrong is the uh, most consumed beverage in the world. So prices will definitely will definitely increase in the future but however we we believe that it's not so it won't inflate so much so that you it'll be out of range for the normal consumers. We'll definitely be in pace with, with the, the normal standard inflation rate. Great and thank you for watching uh, you know, 
the National Green Stories online news say hard pertaining uh, to the issue of coffee, uh, the owl brand in Southeast Asia. And once again, I'm Robin Steinberg. Have a great day, we. Maybe it's, it's, maybe it's the timing. The day is ending in all